Now we're in the garage today for this review because honestly, I just like hanging out in the garage. I don't have to make it look all nice. It's a garage, it's messy and it's wonderful. Just like life. So it has been about a week and a half. It's been over a week since I wiped out and it's worse than what I was hoping. Uh, I mentioned no broken ribs or anything like that, but man, I have a, what is it called? A contusion, my spleen, contused. It's not contust or concussed, it's bruised, man. And my ribs are, and uh, these things take time. I was told a minimum of two weeks. The more I've looked into it, the more I've heard it's a minimum of two to three weeks to heal. Could be as long as like 12 weeks, man. This is like weeks to months. I'm taking it day by day, but um, pain is not going away fast enough. So I haven't been able to ride. Anyways, you know that I believe that opportunities are found in all kinds of areas, even areas that we look at as failures where I can't ride today. It gives me a super cool opportunity to talk about two items that I absolutely love that I have as part of my gear. Uh, the first is my Bell Super DH helmet, which we're gonna get into in a minute. And the second is the Osprey Raptor 14. It does not come with my cool little alien head. But these two things uh, are absolutely a match made in heaven. And I've been wanting to review these things because as riders, I love when other riders review products and give us insight into whether those products are good, bad, and exactly how they use them. Uh, before we get started, I wanna say this. When it came to both the helmet and the bag, they absolutely fell into this category of like woulda, shoulda, coulda, and I did. And what I mean by that is, you know how you go through life and sometimes you have an opportunity to do something, to buy something, to say something, just take action on something. Uh, when your wants and your needs collide, say yes, say yes to that and go get it. I am so grateful I had both of these. Um, not just when I wiped out, but every day that I'm out on the trails and you're gonna see why in a minute. So if you're facing something that is a shoulda, woulda, coulda and those needs and wants collide, say yes to it. So you're not looking back in hindsight saying I really should have gotten that. I could have gotten it and I would have gotten it. Do it. If you came here for the Bell Super DH review, uh, I will put a time on the screen right now that you can jump right to that review and uh, skip all this other nonsense. If you are just interested in the Osprey Raptor 14 review, I'll put a time on the screen for that and you can jump right to that review. And uh, before I move on real quick, listen, since you're here, hit that like button. Actually don't hit it, that's just mean. I say caress the like button. Caress that like button. Uh, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. You might think you're subscribed and you might not be because sometimes we have cognitive distortions. So, <laughs> oh, it hurts to laugh. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, I would love to uh, have you be subscribed to the channel. You can also turn on notifications. And what is even more beautiful is leave me a comment. Do you have this helmet? Do you have this bag? How are you using them? Or what do you rock as part of your gear? when you're out there. I honestly would love to know. I, I just geek out over the fact that people can customize their kits and their gear. It's just so fun. One of the things I love about mountain biking. Let's get on to it. Let's talk about the Bell Super DH helmet first. Okay, uh, when I first started looking into the idea of going from dress, just a trail helmet to a full face, I was very reluctant. And I was reluctant because I didn't know if I wanted to have like a full face on the whole time when I'm out riding. In Southern California, it gets incredibly, incredibly hot. And I just did not want to deal with that kind of heat. So I started looking into convertible helmets. This is what is so cool about the Bell. I'm gonna move that wrap out of the way for a minute. Here's what's so cool about the Bell. Uh, it's a really simple process to just take off. I'm calling it the jawbone. Look at that. This is a convertible helmet, meaning you have a trail helmet here and then you have this sweet jawbone that you can put on when you're headed downhill. You want a little more protection. You want to uh, you know, feel a little more confident with what you're doing. You can do that. Um, this helmet is awesome. I've had this helmet for about a year now and I got a great deal on it. I actually wanted the black and white and I'm glad I got it. Um, let's go through some of the features on this and I'll show you just, just why this thing is so, so flippin' cool. Uh, one, I like the look of it. So here's what it looks like when I put this thing on. I have uh, quarantine hair right now, corona hair. 
Very easy to put on. It has a magnetic clasp. This is like the easiest thing in the world to clasp right here. And it has a retention dial in the back. So I can sync that in for exactly the type of fit that I want. So here's the trail helmet. Um, this doesn't feel any hotter than the Troy Lee Designs A1, which is what I used to rock. It was the A1, not the A2. I think the A2 is a more breathable one. If I made a mistake on that, leave me a comment below. Feel free to correct me. Um, but I wear this out when I'm riding. I keep my helmet on even for uphills because you know sometimes you're going uphill and then some of those uphills actually have a little bit of downhill to them and some of that downhill can even have some exposure to it. I'm talking about trails like the Luge if you're from around here or maybe in your area there's some trails. I always like to have a helmet on if I can. So one of the things for me was if I only got a full face and it was too hot and I took that off, then I, I don't have that protection, you know, just to keep my flow going on the uphills and possible little downhills while I'm climbing. So this was a great, um, this was a great option for me. Now the visor goes up so you can actually fit uh, goggles up here when you need to and the, and the visor goes back down. It's a breakaway visor. But this is how easy it is to put this thing on when you're on the trail. Uh, we're gonna get into how I carry this jawbone with me when I'm not using it in a minute. This involves the Raptor 14. But um, at first, this feels really awkward to put on. Absolutely for sure, because it's like, well, I've never put a jawbone on before. But as you get used to this, it's not too bad. So this kind of bends open a little bit and there's only three clasps. Uh, two on the side, which move these little like hooks. They move those hooks, see that? That hook moves, I hope you can see that. Which clamps it onto the side of the helmet. And then the back part here is going to um, just kind of uh, snap together and, and clamp together. So what you do to put this thing on is you've gotta make sure these things are open. Man, if you buy one of these, the biggest mistake some people make, because I made it too, is these things are closed and you're wondering like why your helmet isn't going on. Keep these, keep these things open. Spread this and just kind of put it right around your neck. And what you're gonna feel is, is these parts. Um, I don't know, these little air channels uh, are actually, you can see they're kind of extended out here. They're just gonna fit into the back of the helmet like that and you snap either, doesn't matter like how you do this. I usually hit the sides here with my, uh, with my um, uh, hands and then you just snap the back and that's it. So the helmet now is on that retention dial. You can cinch in even more. It's super comfortable and it actually breathes really, really well. The bell helmet comes with um, other padding for your cheeks and things. So if it's too tight, you can switch those things out. And to take this thing off, I just pop the back, the fronts, and boom, this thing is off. You might've seen me uh, take this thing on and off in other videos that I've had, but um, I absolutely love this thing. So yeah, I don't know, call it two thumbs up, five stars, that's 10 stars. We'll go with that, 10 stars. Um, it's cool. It's called the Super DH because it's actually downhill rated. Now, Bell makes some other ones. Let me put this hat back on so you don't have to look at my wonky hair. Uh, Bell makes some other ones. Uh, 2H, I think there's one, something called the 3R. Uh, this is the one I believe that is downhill rated though. Uh, it feels really, really well made, very secure. Now I told you about that magnetic clasp. What's so cool about it is literally just with your fingers, you can unclasp that. And then if you if you only have one hand available and you're riding on the trail, boom, that thing is, is on now. Really, really great. There's no adjustable straps under the ears, but they have something in here. I forgot the name that, that they call it, that Bell calls it, but under this little piece of Velcro here, See if we got the right lighting in here. There is, um, you can take these little plastic uh, parts and pop them off. And you can adjust how deep that helmet sits uh, on, your, on your melon. Uh, when I first got this helmet, I really liked it, but it felt like it was sitting a little high, so it wasn't as comfortable as the Troy Lee uh, A1 that I was used to before this. Uh, and definitely not as comfortable as the A2 until I adjusted, excuse me, until I adjusted those things. Once I adjusted those things, it actually sat on my head as comfortably as the Troy Lee helmet. Dialed that thing in and uh, absolutely love it. Um, there's a little sweat panel here on your, uh, 
on your padding. This is so as your forehead is dripping sweat, it actually collects here, and so it doesn't go on your eyes. Sweat is always a problem when you're out on the trails, obviously, but it's nice to have just a little extra protection so it does not go in your eyes. If you ever need to replace this lining, it's super cheap. It's like 10 bucks or something if you need to replace the lining. Speaking of the inside of this helmet, they have something else called the spherical MIPS. So if you're new to helmets and you ever see something like this on the back, it says MIPS. Uh, I, I think that's an acronym for something. Again, comment section. You can tell me what it's an acronym for. But MIPS is cool. What it does is as your head... Uh, makes an impact if you were to wipe out instead of your head taking that impact with the helmet the helmet shifts a little bit on your head like this so your head and then your brain isn't shifting so quickly in there causing your brain to rock and roll all over your skull but this helmet has something called the spherical mips you see these little like uh, yellow rubber bands that are here on it there is a helmet within a helmet so as I turn this Okay. You can see that this inner part of the helmet moves around. And then there's the outer shell of the helmet. Surprisingly, it still doesn't feel that heavy to me. Now, I don't have a scale here to tell you, uh, you know, the grams or the pounds that this thing weighs. Uh, I'm sure you can look all that up. Well, I, I know for a fact you can look all that up. We have something new that just came out like last week called the internet. You might want to get on it. Anyways, um, uh, I don't know how much it weighs. It's really not that bad. It breathes really, really well. And again, the ability to wear a trail helmet when I want to, and then um, be like Optimus Prime, man. Be a transformer and put the jawbone on. I just think that's really badass. So totally recommend this helmet. Uh, any other features on here I'm leaving out? I don't think so. Um, if you use this helmet, I would love to know what you think about it. Um, because I just think it's awesome. So. I'm pretty convinced that when it's time for me to get another helmet, I will probably just re-get myself a Bell Super DH helmet. So good job, Bell. Let's talk about the Osprey Raptor 14, and then I'm gonna show you how these things go together really, really well. So Bell gets put away, moving towards the Osprey Raptor 14. If uh, you ever have to buy a pack and you're wondering about this bag or any others, when you see a number on the bag like 14, what it's talking about is the liters of the bag. So bags are done in liters. This is a 14 liter bag. That's the capacity that it has uh, for you to carry things. Now, from what I understand, the Osprey Raptor 14 was made for mountain biking, and this thing is killer. Now this bag uh, is super comfortable and it comes with a hydration bladder um, in it. You can see the tube here. It's actually filled with water and the hydration bladder is a two and a half liter hydration bladder. So if my math is right, you have 14 liter bag, you have two and a half uh, liters of water in here. I think you have what, 11 and a half liters left to put stuff in. So there that is. Oh, I gotta put that down because, oh, my torso can't take that right now. I kind of stress. Um, let's show you some of the cool stuff about this bag. Now, here's the thing. Uh, Raptor makes a Raptor 10 and the Raptor 14. And you might be like, all right, Adam Mock, why would I get the 14 over the 10? Well, I'm gonna show you why. There's a slight difference besides one being 14 liters and the other being 10 liters. And that's the fact that the 14 liter bag has this outside um, flap. How I just flapped that down. Now this is meant to hold a full face helmet in place uh, on this. And uh, let me show you how that's done by putting this full face back together real quick. I say real quick, it's probably easier for me to put this together when it's on me than when it's not on me. But, uh, you know, try something all the time. What madness! That was pretty quick to put together and it wasn't even on me. Uh, you just do this. You literally put that flap up through uh, the full face. And then you can adjust these clips if you need to. Clip it and cinch it up. I feel like an infomercial right now, man. Set it and forget it. Anyways, that's it. Look at that. Boom. And you can keep that full face uh, on your backpack if you want to do that. Maybe you're transporting this, um, you know, in the back of your car on your way to the trails, or maybe you're, you have to hike up something. Whatever you want, your, your full face can go on the back of, of that. Uh, let's take that full face off for a minute. I'll show you some of the other stuff. There's a, I don't know what you call this thing, but that's for your light, if you want a light on the back of your backpack. 
so much ridiculous storage in here. Where I have my Alien and on that flap, you have your quick pouch, stretches so you can throw bars in there, um, playing cards, whatever you want. Why would you have playing cards out on the trail? I don't know, man. Sometimes we treat these things like the Old West and you never know when a poker game is gonna throw down. So you want your playing cards in there. And I realized after I said all that, I don't carry cards in there. Anyhow, I digress. There's another pouch here. This is like for your phone. I don't know what you call this material, but you see these things in swanky bags, and this is like a non-scratch material. So throw your phone in there. You know, there's kind of a general rule in mountain biking. Don't keep your phone in your shorts because you wipe out and that phone takes a beating. So put your phone in here. Nice place to, to carry that. This is uh, meant to put like your helmet on. So we saw the full face attaches to this thing already. Um, this little elastic dongle, let's call it. Uh, you can actually just put like your trail helmet, you know, pop this thing through the top air hole of your trail helmet and that just cinches it down. Super handy, really, really cool. Side pocket here on the flap. Zip that open. So much good stuff in here, like a little clip for your keys, mesh pocket in here. I carry a, uh, my, um, what do you call this thing? My gauge, my air pressure gauge in here. I have some other stuff in it. A lot of room just in that front pouch alone. God, we haven't even fully begun to explore this, this thing. Next pocket, you have your major Let's call this the mother of all pockets, the marsupial pouch here. More stretchy stuff here. I have, uh, this is slippery elm lozenges. That's not what's in there. I have Band-Aids in here. I have, um, uh, I don't know. I have stuff in here, man. Stuff uh, for the trails. Uh, I carry all kinds of stuff for the GoPro in here. This, this pouch is actually really cool because, oh, here I have an inner tube in here right now. That'll be some other video. We'll go, what's in Adam's bag? But, you can fit a lot in here. So usually what I'll put in here is like, I'll put like my GoPro in here, you know? Cause this also has on this front part that same material that doesn't scratch. So I can put my GoPro in here. Uh, I could even throw my goggles in here. I have some Smith goggles in here and I can very easily zip this up. But you can see how much storage there is there. Um, take the goggles out. Oh. Take out that GoPro for a second. Okay, more stuff. When that pouch is here and it's attached, you can use these side of the of the one pouch for uh, even more storage. It comes with hip pouches even. These are absolutely great for um, putting bars in here. Um, that's super cool. This cinches around your waist. Let's go to the front. Shoulder straps, uh, everything is adjustable here. Uh, if you have this, some people don't know this, so I'll show you something. Give you a little tips and tricks here on the Raptor 14. If you don't like where this is positioned, this is actually made to slide. <gasps> Madness, you say. So you can put this up lower, higher, wherever you need that to be. So you can adjust that as you want. Another tip I wanna give you is I went and ordered a camelback clasp right here. I love camelback's magnetic clasps. So this Raptor actually comes with a clasp that is okay. So taking, uh, ordering a camelback clasp, I forgot what this was, 10 to 12 bucks maybe on Amazon. This thing is so cool, man, because look, it like hooks in and that's going nowhere. Like it's going nowhere. So for you know an extra 10 to 12 bucks, pick yourself up one of these, really easy to keep your, um, the, the tube of your bladder in place when you're riding around. Another quick tip with this, by the way, because not everybody knows this either. It's something I have to learn. When you have your bladder and it's full, I purposely did this here. So this, I didn't fill it up to two and a half liters. It's about two liters. You have all this air in the top of it here. There's something called burping your bladder. So when you ride around, if you don't burp your bladder, you get this. It's kind of annoying, you know? Uh, burping your bladder is as soon as you fill it up, flip that bladder upside down. Look at all that air that's in it. So what they tell you to do is just suck that air out. I was actually thirsty too. 
Man, that's some nice cold water. Suck that air out and look what happens. Now it's gone. So now it doesn't do that like weird sloshing noise and everything. And as you continue to get your water out of this, it'll continue to have that vacuum in it. So burp your bladders. We'll all be better for us. Let's put this back in here for now. Okay, last thing I think I did not show you that this thing comes with is this. The very base of, of the Raptor. You get a tool kit. You can roll this thing out. Well, it doesn't come with the tools. It actually just comes with like this tool compartment holder. So it comes with this whole yellow thing with everything. Awesome. I, um, you can roll that back up. This tool kit comes out, by the way, which is awesome. Like you can literally separate the entire tool kit, put it in a whole different bag if you want to. Really nice feature, um, really nice feature to have on here. So zip that back up. That is the Osprey Raptor 14. Okay, so why am I calling this a match made in heaven between this and the, um, and the Bell Super DH? Well, I will tell you. Uh, I've actually been stopped a handful of times when I'm out on the trail to ask what is that on my backpack? And what they're talking about is this. When I got this helmet and I was wondering how on earth am I going to carry this jawbone around with me when I'm not wearing it, the whole point of getting this pack was to carry this. Not just all the other tools with me, and this is a super comfortable pack for sure, um, but it was to carry this, this jawbone with me. So when uh, I cinch up everything on the back of the jawbone, what I do is this. I take the... Um, this, this elastic helmet holder and I put it through the mouthpiece of the jawbone and that secures it in place first. There's more to it, but I'll show you why. It's because when I'm on the trail and I want to take this out, it's not going anywhere now, but it does, it's very easy for this thing to just flap around. I, I don't want that when I'm riding uphill or if I decide not to use this. But once I put that in place, if I take that full face holder, look at this. This comes on the outside and I clasp it down. Zip that up. Clasp it down, zip it up. Look at that. That is on my backpack now. Now I know that these things uh, look sharp. They kind of are. Remember, this is if I'm going uphill on something that this is like it. And uh, if I do hit those areas that might have a little bit of downhill while this is on my back, I'm trying to minimize this thing coming up and maybe hitting me in the back. And it's, it's kind of difficult for it to do that with, with what I have in the bag and with the way this is cinched up. Um, use your own discretion with this, okay? I'm not here to say this is 100% safe, but this is a really cool option, I think, for how to carry this jawbone around. I feel so much better knowing I have this kind of protection with me. Uh, as you saw in my last video, or maybe you didn't see, check it out, my last video where I wipe out. Because I had these with me, uh, it made a huge difference. I actually landed uh, on the side of my head. And if you watch the footage, the tire comes around and hits me in the head on one. It just made a head sandwich is what happened. It was the ground my face, thankfully with the Bell Super DH and, and then the tire hitting me. I was really grateful to have this, this jawbone with me. Um, the other cool thing about having this, this kind of stuff is even with the jawbone on here, because it's, it's adjustable like this, I also wear elbow pads, but I know on climbs that stuff gets stupid hot. Uh, so I have these Dekine Slayer pads. By the way, I got a killer deal on these. I think they're like 26 bucks right now. At, REI and I had like $25 credit. So do the math. With tax and everything, it cost me $3 for these. And I like them. They they feel like, you know, wearing G-form or something. They're snug, they're good, they protected me. But on the uphills when it's really hot, if I don't want to wear these, I can actually shove them, look at this, right down here into that sleeve and then just reattach, reattach this. God, Osprey, you're awesome for making this bag. Tighten it up, and now I have my jawbone, I have, you know, uh, my goggles, my uh, GoPro, uh, elbow pads. I can carry so much stuff with me. I know some of you like to travel a little lighter, I like to travel a little safer, so I'll take the weight penalty. 
on that kind of stuff. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I love review videos, absolutely love them. Uh, I would have made this a lot cooler and a lot slicker, but like I said, I'm just not as mobile as I'd like to be, and I don't wanna sit behind my laptop very long. So this allows me to just kind of upload it and hopefully still be helpful to all of you guys out there. Uh, I wanna be back on my trusty Ibis Ritmo sooner than later. I've named it Casablancas, by the way. See if you can figure out why. Uh, Casablancas, I hope to be uh, back out on the trails sooner than later with that. But uh, until that time happens and until another video comes out, I wish all of you, as always, nothing but peace and love. Say what you want, say what you will, I miss the ride.